good afternoon from, uh, actually good morning, technically, from where I'm at, from uh, 20,000 feet or flight level 200. We're currently uh, just southwest of Grand Forks. We just took off towards uh, Phoenix. Going to go pick up my in-laws and bring them back to uh, Montana for the summer. Uh, it's a fun uh, fun, quick trip, long trip, I guess. You know, it's about six hours down and then six hours to bring them up to Montana and then about an hour and a half back home. So it's a lot of flying in two days. But uh, anyway, it's a good trip. So one of the common things that I get is, you know, how much gas does the 414 burn? And, and it's funny because people just really don't think about it. Now, when you're empty, it's it's definitely not a good proposition. You know, and some people ask, like, do you fly the airplane down to, to work? You know, I work out of Minneapolis uh, most of the time. And so uh, the answer is definitely no, because I'm not going to fly uh, a large uh, twin engine airplane uh, empty because it's just not economical whatsoever. However, when you load it up with people, then that becomes a, uh, a much different, you know, proposition in terms of like, is it is it economical to, to fly an airplane? So uh, right now you can see we're flying along at uh, uh, 20,000 feet um, over here. I'm not sure if you can see it quite yet or not, but uh, our true airspeed is 215 knots and the ground speed is 230 knots. And, uh, 230 knots is, you know, ballpark around, I don't know, 270 miles per hour. So we're moving across the ground at about 270 miles per hour, which obviously is great. Uh, it, that depends, of course, on the winds, but, you know, we're certainly moving fairly quick uh, across the ground. The winds, we have a little bit of a tailwind today, which is great. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to show you over here on the flight instruments, uh, and we're running right up against the, uh, the high edge of the power setting. So uh, contrary to some airplanes, with this airplane, we basically use... Uh, the manufacturer of the engine, which is Ram Overhauls, and they have a, they have a card that basically you you, you set your uh, cruise power setting based on that card, um, rather than trying to do like you know if you fly GA, you know you're used to like okay you know go go to peak EGT and then maybe go rich or use a lean assist function or maybe lean of peak whatever it is that you fly. So in this we just basically set preset values. So we find the temperature aloft here. And then we set 33.4, uh, we're trying, I was trying for about 33.3 .3 inches of manifold. That's the actual power output of the engines. Uh, the RPMs are 2,400 RPMs for each engine. This little uh, spinner, it spins in the direction of the faster prop. And right now you can see that the left side is just, uh, it's about the same, but just a hair maybe faster than the right. So it'll spin towards the faster prop. And then what Ram will have you do is set the fuel flow. So uh, it's around 120 pounds per hour, and that's actually, if you can see, the blue cyan target. And most of Garmin's display products, you'll see a blue cyan target. In fact, that's most avionics today. Uh, the blue cyan target is generally where you're going to look to set the fuel flow. Uh, because I'm running just a hair higher power than what uh, it was calling for, this is set to about uh, just a few pounds per hour faster. So that's about 120 uh, just over 120 pounds per hour. It's six pounds per gallon. In aviation, everybody asks, like, why do you guys use pounds? Because everything, everything we do in aviation is related to weight balance, and so it's really important that we that we use uh, pounds. Uh, everything we do at pounds, especially at the airlines, everything is pounds. How many how many pounds of fuel do you take on? How many pounds do you want to land with? So everything is in pounds. Now, you can change this in most Garmin products. You can change if you'd like the display to be in gallons per hour, and some people prefer that, uh, but it's just what I do for a living, so I leave it in pounds per hour. So what does that mean? 120 pounds per hour is 20, approximately 20 gallons per hour on each side uh, or each engine. So each engine is burning 20 gallons per hour, which equates to 40 gallons per hour. Not 40 miles per gallon, but 40 gallons every hour. So it's a lot of gas that you're using. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned, you know, right now we're moving you know, over 250 miles per hour across the ground. And again, that can vary with the wind. But in general, if there's no wind, this airplane cruises at about 230 miles per hour. So when you start to do the math, you know, I always take Minneapolis' as example, okay? So Minneapolis, you know, Minneapolis would be just over an hour to get down to Minneapolis. Um, so that would involve, uh, you know, about, call it 60 gallons of gas to get down to Minneapolis. And 60 gallons of gas, unfortunately, it's not like the price that you pay for unleaded gas. You know, our gas prices are anywhere from, you know, 450 or $5 a gallon to 750 or $8 a gallon. So it's, it's, a, it's a ton of gas money to take this airplane somewhere. So when you've got one person on the airplane, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But when you put, you know, this airplane uh, can hold, I mean, it can hold eight people. To actually, you can, get, you can get nine people in this airplane. It's certified for it. Uh, I, I never fly more. We have eight seats, and the most I've ever flown is with eight people. Uh, but if you have, let's just say, six people, so we have a family of six, then all of a sudden, the, 
the uh, the actual like cost to fly the airplane somewhere becomes you know certainly it's not as cheap as driving a car, but I'm not comparing driving a car to flying an airplane in an hour and fifteen minutes to Minneapolis. You know, it's a it's a quick flight. It's it saves a ton of you know traffic and fatigue, and uh, it's it's just so much better. So you can't really compare it to driving. But when you compare it to like taking the airlines, all of a sudden it's actually, you know, if you've got six people on board, it's actually pretty economical compared to, you know, what we pay for uh, the airline service that we get out of Grand Forks. So, uh, uh, you know, now flying down to Phoenix, of course, it's uh, it's about six hours down and then it's about, like I said, six hours back to uh, back to Montana and then an hour and a half back home. Uh, and normally we wouldn't do this, but uh, my in-laws have all their kind of summer stuff and... Uh, and they have a, an older dog that they kind of have to drug up for travel. So there's just a lot of stuff. So they're like, hey, you know, if we could use the plane for a few years while the dog is, you know, still alive, it's probably alive for a few more years, um, it would be super uh, helpful for them for, for traveling, uh, for the uh, going down to Phoenix in the fall and then coming back in the uh, spring. So so it works out. Again, empty, you know, not not a very you know good proposition for the cost of fuel. But when you're full, uh, it certainly becomes a lot more economical. The, the, the same thing goes for, you know, if you're flying like a Piper Archer or a Cessna 172, it, it's the same thing. You know, if you're flying by yourself in those airplanes, uh, certainly it maybe doesn't make economic sense. Although it certainly is a lot of uh, freedom and flexibility to just get in your airplane and go somewhere. Uh, and, you know, even a 172 flying at 110 knots, you know, that can save you a ton of time going, uh, you know, from like here to Phoenix. Certainly got across the mountains, which is difficult in the 172, but, you know, it's, it is possible. You can find some passes if the weather's good. So anyway, I just thought I'd share the video about, you know, a fuel burn. And these airplanes are generally around 40 gallons per hour total. Um, you're moving a lot faster, though, than, you know, a small airplane. And you're, you're pressurized. Uh, you're carrying a ton of weight. You know, the useful load of this airplane is over 2,000 pounds. So, you know, if you drop the fuel down a little bit to like 800 pounds of gas, you can take 1,200 pounds of people and stuff or, or more. So, you know, it's really remarkable as to the, the capabilities of these old twin Cessnas. And really, there's nothing, there's nothing even close to comparison today uh, at all. There's just, there's just no comparison. You have to get into like, you know, a bigger turbine, like a caravan or something, until you actually can match the the actual payload capabilities of this airplane. And the caravan is not pressurized. Certainly, it's uh, a turbine airplane, which is awesome. But uh, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, like it, ask any questions in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day.